Sue, how dare you do this to me? Now my job is on the line. You know, I thought we were friends. So did I, William, until you made a mockery of my friendly overtures by making me clean up after you like a common house slave. What are you talking about? Oh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your complete lack of table manners was the last straw. It was a disposable plastic fork that broke the camel's back. And now I feel it is my duty to stop holding back and get real honest with you, Will Schuster. Fine. Bring it on. You remember that Christmas when you foolishly let me into your apartment for some reason? Yeah. Well, the primary ingredient of that fruitcake that I watched you enjoy was actually three years of plaque that Brad, the piano player, had scraped off his teeth and collected into a small jar. And you never should have let me use your bathroom because the minoxidil that you've been rubbing into your scalp twice daily for the last three years is actually just my pee. Why would I stoop to such puerile acts? Because I hate you, Will Schuster. And I'll stop at nothing until I see you homeless in the streets, drinking gutter runoff, and allowing passers-by to perform lewd acts on your butt chin for money. You are a fatuous, dim-witted, borderline pederast who tears up faster than a gay jihadi in a sandstorm. You have befouled the profession of teaching by accepting not only one, but two Teacher of the Year awards, despite not speaking a word of the foreign language you purport to teach. Like the story predators of yesteryear, Will. You pick only the most vulnerable students to favor while actively neglecting the others. Like that gross kid with the dreadlocks, or that poor Irish idiot, Rory. Or the black dancer whose name none of us remember because you rode his back to a win at sectionals and then promptly ignored him into oblivion. You positively worship a student if they can so much as carry a tune, and yet you don't know a single name of the only true musical geniuses in that choir room. The band! who have demonstrated time and again that they can, at the drop of a hat, play literally any song you can name. And still, you treat them like so much nameless human garbage. Your bizarre psychosexual obsession with that glee club was disturbing from the first moment you stalked a nude student in the showers. You know, I'm honestly surprised you didn't reenact what was clearly the formative event of your own teenage years. And Sandusky, the poor kid, right there and then. Oh, and I think those absorbent sweater vests actually hide the fact that you lactate every time you give one of your excruciatingly condescending pep talks. Your charms wore off a long time ago, William. Somewhere around Bieber week. So why don't you take your washboard abs and your washboard forehead, get the hell out of my office. Oh, and take that uncomfortable smirk and the nine-foot fart you must be holding in with you. And let her rip the second you get home. Because you know what? If you're lucky, that sphincter just might toot out the first minute and a half a wheel in the sky, which is the only Journey song you haven't yet managed to ruin. You know what, Sue? I happen to know that you're not long for this school. What are you talking about? I heard a rumor that you are making retirement plans. Damn it, Becky. She tweeted it, didn't she? I'll tell you right now that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that the Glee Club is a permanent fixture at this school long after you're gone. It's good talking to you, sir.